So Lexus is the sister company of Toyota where they manufacture high-end luxury cars. Now they've just made their way into India and here's a quick crash course on everything that you need to know. ES refers to the name executive sedan, 300H referring to the fact that it's a hybrid and another giveaway the fact is this cool looking blue halo on the Lexus badging. This car is based on a car called the Toyota Avalon so it sort of goes against the likes of the Audi A6 and BMW 5 series. Now when it comes to design this is bold, this is new, this is fresh. Now in the back the bold edgy design continues but if you haven't noticed yet there is no exhaust pipe and the reason for that is because it's tucked away inside the rear bumper because of the fact that it's a hybrid. Now when it comes to boot space, it's got a 425 litre boot space. It's not exactly class leading and the reason for that is because the battery pack of the hybrid sits right here. But Lexus tell us that this is good for not one, not two, but a total of four sets of golf clubs. That's pretty big. Being on the inside of this car, it does feel very special. The now Lexus tell us that it is the Takumi, the masters of their craft, are the ones who kind of put this car together and uh, everything that you touch is very soft touch, there isn't really any hard points, the quality of the materials used feels very premium, it is supremely comfortable. One thing I have to mention is the attention to detail guys, for example you have this analog clock right here and you have these two little metal studs but those are the buttons that you actually need to press to adjust the time. Here on the infotainment unit you now have the sort of you have this Lexus joystick sort of thing. Now in the back this is the kind of car that you probably want to be chauffeured around. To start off you have these man manual blinds which go up and down. Uh, if you flip down this portion right here of course you have cup holders what you also have is a few basic controls for your climate control and uh, increasing the volume and choosing the source of your uh, audio preferences another interesting thing that it has is a little button to pull down the blinds at the back a little bit of an extra storage right here if you need it as well now as you can see affixed to my seating position in the front plenty of leg room even i can even extend my feet if i want to a decent amount of headroom even though that this has quite a sloping roof towards the back and um, another interesting feature is that it has an ashtray you don't find that nowadays in cars like this uh, i guess it's just the japanese way so here is the heart of the matter guys the hybrid powertrain now what you have here is the ICE or the internal combustion engine. This is the electric motor that drives the front wheels. Now in the back you have that hybrid battery pack and somewhere in the middle you have an engine controller of sorts. Now the ICE which is the internal combustion engine effectively is mated to a generator that generates electricity that feeds in the battery that powers the electric motor. Now when you get off the line you can put the car in EV mode. It just runs purely on electric power from the electric motor that it generates you get you can go about 40 kilometers per hour for about 500 meters to a kilometer in ev mode alone and then the the engine kicks in which then supplies the energy to the battery pack which then allows you to kind of cruise around in the streets and on the highways if you need extra power when you put in sport mode and if you want to do a lot more spirited driving then this works in conjunction with the electric motor to generate as much power to the front wheels as possible to give you a spirited driving experience. I have to say the levels of refinement of this car is completely off the charts. The energy monitor tells us that we're primarily using the battery and as a result it's an extremely quiet ride. The suspension on the car is incredibly soft, it's tuned towards more suppleness uh, it warps along the road, it irons out the bumps. The steering, well this is an EPS, this is an electrically assisted rack. It's nice and light, it's direct. The transition between the ICE and the electric motor is seamless. You don't really feel it, it's just when you're driving along you casually, occasionally sort of get a hum that that's when you kind of know that the engine has sort of kicked in. And the CVT gearbox does a phenomenal job of sort of just propelling the car in. The glass is acoustic glass, it's essentially three layers of glass uh, between film that are folded together to isolate uh, external noise. This car is running the Yokohama DB tyres, they're designed to reduce rolling noise of the tyres from the road that comes into the cabin. The hybrid system is really designed to work together to give better performance rather than just efficiency. Uh, so they're telling us earlier with just the petrol engine if you do a 0 to 100 time it's about 9.5 but with the hybrid system together it's 8.5 seconds. So in short the ES300 is 
incredibly quiet to drive, it's incredibly refined to drive. Now at the cost of 57.2 lakh rupees X showroom New Delhi, it's about 3 to 4 lakh rupees more expensive than its equivalent competition. But you can let us know what you thought about the ES300 in the comments below. But before that, let's check out the next car, the RX 450H. RX stands for Radiant Crossover, 450H indicating that it's a hybrid. The design is very aggressive and a little too busy if you ask me. The combination of the big grille with the slats and the lines make it look a bit like a spaceship. Love it or hate it, you just can't ignore it. The hybrid pattern consists of a 3.5 litre V6 engine with two electric motors making this an all-wheel drive and a combined output of 308 bhp. Now this is enough to propel the car from 0 to 100 in 7.7 .7 seconds and a top speed of 200 km per hour while it is rated to give us an average of 18.8 km per litre. Another interesting feature is that this is an LED analog clock but it's GPS assisted so if you get into the settings and you change your essentially your time zone it has a direct impact on the time that you're going to set. In the back we have a 450 liter boot with a full size spare wheel despite holding a battery pack. On the inside all the four seats are ventilated, it's got dual zone climate control, a panoramic sunroof, an HUD and a 12.3 inch infotainment system with a 15 speaker Mark Levinson sound system. Although the system isn't a touch screen nor does it have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Now this is the S Sport version, what's really different on this car that's from the regular car a couple of things with the sport package you basically get on the exteriors you get a new grill you get a new bumper you get a different kind of orvm on the inside you get different seats you get a sporty steering wheel with paddle shifters sport badging and uh, in the engine bay they also have fitted a device which they call the sound generator it's essentially it's a resonance chamber that amplifies the sound of the engine to give it a bit more sporty gruff now this is an all-wheel drive system but not in the way you think it has an additional motor that powers the rear wheels and that kicks in when the the car needs a little bit more grip a little more acceleration a little bit more traction now you're probably thinking like this might be detaching compared to other all-wheel drive systems that have transfer cases and differentials and works on complex gearboxes but driving this car I have to confess it really works now when you put it in sport mode this is where the fun sort of really begins it you can see the tachometer changes you get like a different color to it it changes red steering gets heavier the suspension gets stiffer the thr throttle response is sharpened and that engine really comes alive and the inspiration from the LFA here and there with the heads-up display, it really is a very interesting place to be. The only complaint I have with this mode is when it comes to the gearbox. Now this is a ECVT, so nothing really you can do about it, but it does have paddle shifters, but it doesn't really matter which gear you're in. So currently I'm in, I'm doing 40 in 6th gear, put my foot down. Because it's a CVT, it's going to change uh, its ratios and help me with acceleration. So even though it has paddle shifters, it's not particularly useful in that sense. At a price of 1.1 crores, the RX 450H goes against the likes of the Jaguar F-Pace R Sport and the Porsche Cayenne. And with that, I hope you've gotten a taste of what it's like to drive the Lexus 450H. There's only one car remaining, the LX 450D. This car is huge. While this is based on the Land Cruiser, it has received a Lexus overhaul. The design is more angular than boxy and the lights make it look like it has high cheekbones. LX stands for Luxury SUV and 450 refers to the 4.5 litre V8 diesel that produces 265 bhp and 650 newton meters of torque. Driving this car in UT, well, that was an experience I will remember. Even though it's over 5 meters long and 2 meters wide, it wasn't very intimidating to drive. The power delivery is very linear and predictable and while cruising, the refinement levels are excellent. It does however behave like a typical body on frame SUV, wobbling about here and there. Coming from the two cars I drove before this, you could really feel the weight of this hydraulic power steering and the best part of all, nobody wanted to mess with this car on the road. In the back you have this split folding tailgate with a 100 watt socket. A 100 watt socket basically you can you can power up a home barbecue or even a mini fridge if you want. 
So this is essentially designed for you to go on those long excursions or hunting trips, if you will, with your buddies. And it is so huge in here. Well, it can definitely double up as a home. And if you're wondering, yes, it also has a full-size spare tire. All right, now it comes with a 19-speaker Mark Levinson sound system. It's got a wireless charging cradle. It's got this interesting feature called Climate Concierge, which can detect the body heat of passengers who come into the car, and it directs more colder air towards them to keep them cool for longer. It also has a cool glove box, which is with a power button, so it's effectively more of a refrigerator than a cool glove box. And right here is the mother load. This is where you pay that premium for, because this has got more buttons than an aeroplane. Everything from your call features to your driving modes to locking the differentials to adjusting the height of the suspension. It's even got a heated steering wheel. It's got um, a slew of controls which we just don't have enough time to go over right now. Now luxury is the name of the game. Each of these seats are heated and they're cooled, they're completely ventilated. In the back you have these personal 11.6 inch uh, multi-infotainment displays with separate input so you can plug in your own personal content. It's got a headphone jack, it's got a HDMI input as well. So you can have this purely as your own, different from passenger who's sitting next to you. In addition to that, you also have climate control buttons in here. And if you're feeling a little bit more lazy, it's got a nice little remote tucked away as well. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Well, with that, we've concluded our first quick preview of the Lexus range of cars. Basically, to highlight, you have three cars. You have a sedan and a crossover, which are essentially hybrids, and you have a big luxury SUV. Now, Toyota's philosophy into bringing Lexus down into India has been to just sort of extend the brand, to build on the network and the reliability and trust that Toyota has garnered over the years. Now, it's going to be interesting to see how Lexus progresses over the year, next coming year because this, I think, is a very interesting proposition of cars that they have to offer. And Lexus have told us they actually haven't set a sales target of how many cars they want to sell this year because they want to focus on building the brand and getting to know their customers much better. With that, we have concluded our first our quick preview of the Lexus range of cars. I hope you've enjoyed this content. You can let us know what you thought about the cars in the comment section below. As always, don't forget to subscribe to Power Drift and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.